Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. Now, a lot of you have asked me about welding and how to eliminate distortion. Well, you're not the only one that has distortion, so I'm going to describe to you how you can control it. You're not going to eliminate it. You just need to know the characteristic of what causes distortion. So I'm going to give you a formula. Now, you don't have to have a calculator, but I want you to have an understanding that it's measured in joules per inch. What that equates to is volts times amps times 60 divided by inches per minute or your travel speed. So I'm going to show you two different settings and we're going to calculate the joules per inch so you can look at the two different samples that I do. Just remember it's heat input. And we're going to review those samples, but just remember the weakest part of your weld is the heat affected zone. Sometimes the initials HAZ show up uh, in different articles. So let's get started. I'm going to show you one setting and, and then we're going to calculate the joules per inch and show you the weld. Okay, I've got a piece of stainless steel sitting here and it's flat, so absolutely no distortion, and it's about an eighth inch thick. Now, here are my parameters so you can calculate your own joules per inch. I'm going to be running at 95 amps, I'm going to be running at 9 volts, my travel speed is going to be 8 inches a minute. So let's get started and keep an eye on the plate so you can see how much distortion, and you're going to see that it distorts even after I finish welding. Okay, I got arc initiation and my travel speed. Travel speed again is 8 inches a minute. Doing a very nice weld. Gas coverage is good. Well, is, uh, well it's a little bit wide, but that's okay. It's welding very nicely. Now, this material will probably start to distort and it may even distort to a level to where it distorts up into the tungsten. And that's some pretty major distortion. And I can see it bowing already. And I'll just keep going until I just either run out of material or it distorts up into the tungsten. Okay, still looking good, still looking good. And I'm going to go about probably another inch before I stop. Yeah, the pedal looks nice. All right, I'm getting about an inch away from the end of the part, so I'm going to go ahead and taper off and extinguish the weld. Now watch what happens to, to the plate. My weld is finished, and you can see the plate is actually distorting as it cools off. Okay, we're going to do a second weld now. The only variable change that we're going to make is travel speed, or inches per minute. So we're going to jump it up to about 12 inches per minute, and you'll see the difference. Okay, weld is finished. Okay, now that we've finished both welds, let's take a look at each weld individually. Now remember the formula is joules per inch. So voltage is the distance of your tungsten to your part. We ran 9 volts times amperage. Amperage is 95 times 60. Now you take all of that and you divide it by your travel speed. Again, we only change travel speed from sample A to sample B. Now take a look at the one that ran at 12 inches a minute. And you can see that the heat affected zone is very narrow. The weld is very narrow, 
less heat input, less distortion, and a stronger weld. Now let's take a look at the other sample, and again, it was only travel speed, so we're running at six inches a minute. Six inches a minute creates an awfully large weld, large heat affected zone, and you can see the distortion is much greater. You can also see the gas coverage is worse, and it's only because the oxides are starting to absorb uh, oxygen away from the argon. So the point in all of this is that you have full control of your welding. So if uh, some of you guys are welding really, really hot and it's distorting on you, just back off a little bit or just change your travel speed a little bit. We appreciate your questions on heat input and distortion. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.